at 73% from the uh, from the free throw line. And he will have the one in bonus with a minute 12 to go in the game. 66 to 55. Bradley by 11. And it's full house of 7,300. Patiently waiting for the end of the ball game. Anderson will get another toss. All-American from Chicago got the other one. And it's 67 to 55. Bradley again by a dozen. They've kept Tulane out of arm's reach the entire second half. Seven points and close as Tulane could have gotten in the second half. Wide Eads with his second field goal of the ball game. That's the last time out for Tulane. Ned Fowler's used them all. And now he's going to have to hope against Hope. Ten-point game at 67 to 57. Bradley will have the basketball out of bounds and uh, try to run out the final few seconds of this basketball game. Bradley, it looks like, is going to advance to the NCAA or to the... Uh, <laughs> see, when you're in Peoria, you've fought NCAA so long this year that when, they, that when they forgot about it... Well, from what I've seen in the Bradley basketball team tonight, they certainly look like a team that should have been in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they're a good basketball team. Bradley will go to 24-10. and 10. They will go to New York for the NIT quarterfinals, the final four there. Tulane will finish the year with a record of 19-9, and, and their first trip... To a postseason tournament, the trail comes to a halt in Peoria, Illinois, and uh, their season will be over. But they've got they've got the nucleus of a good ball club coming back next year. They have back everybody to, back. Everybody. Joe Holston, of course, they got a re recruiting season ahead of them, so they should have a good, solid basketball team next year. As long as Ned Fowler sticks around, excellent coach. Donald Reese will trigger it in for the final 103 to Mitchell Anderson. Anderson to the backcourt. As it's stripped, that he's fouled. And the foul is going to be called on Ralph Davis, and that is his second. <laughs> and back in, Ned Fowler changes lines again as Daryl Morrow checks back into the ball game along with Clyde Eads and like, Ralph Davis. I like the way Fowler's playing, and he is playing it down to the hilt, even though it's um, looks like an insurmountable lead. He's playing it to the hilt. Here it is in the backcourt. Davis going for the ball. Got a pound of flesh and a dollar's worth of change and Anderson goes to the free throw line for the one of bonus. Seems like they're following the wrong man there. Free throw by Mitchell. He is good. He will get another one. Mitchell Anderson who suffered through about two months of play with a very severe back spasm problem that he suffered against West Texas State back in January and he's played hurt most of the second half of the season has come through like a trooper. It's a sixth grade free throw. He's got 14 on the night now. Clyde Eads again. And Willie Scott comes down with the loose ball rebound. Leads to Barney Mines for the layup. And he's fouled. And a foul's going to be on Thompson. And that's his fourth. And we're down to 50 seconds to go in the ballgame now. Barney Mines will go to the free throw line. Barney with eight points in the second half. Ten in the ballgame. And Barney will go to the line to shoot two shots. There's the foul on Thompson. He's, he's going to make Barney work for his two points. This will be Tulane's second worst defeat of the year. They lost by 18 in Indiana. Ned Fowler looking on from the raised floor. The people may not get a good feel of that back home in New Orleans or wherever you may be if you've never been here, but the floor is raised about three feet, and the crowd comes right down to it all the way around. Barney Mines made them both. Barney with 12 down, it's 71 to 57. Bradley's lead is 14. We're down to 48 seconds for the ball game. Bradley still in that 2-3 zone. Clyde Eats, double team. Backdoor play, deflected, picked up nicely by Wallace. And Tony Wallace has eight points in the ball game. 71 to 59 with 32 seconds in the ball game and a foul on Daryl Morrow out front. That's gonna be Morrow's second personal foul and Willie Scott will go to the free throw line. Take a look at it again. Oh, just reaching in and slapping him on the way. A slap check, as they would call it in the hockey rinks. This is one of the big differences in this game and the LSU game and the Lenabata Las Vegas game. Bradley has hit 10 of 10 from the free throw line in the last 10 attempts. Not a bad effort. You're not going to improve on that. Blazy winners into the ball game for Bradley. And I think now it's senior cheer time. Donald Reese is going to check out. Donald will finish the ball game with 15 points 
and he had 11 in the first half, and it was Donald Reese that really was the story in the first half, buddy. He got Bradley off to that nine-point lead. Sort of hid in the second half. Willie Scott rolls home his first free throw. That's 11 for 11. Ever since Willie Scott missed the front end of the one and one twice, they've been 11 for 11. Here he took. In and David Thurkill going to sit down, and Thurkill going to finish the night with 10 points. Second toss by Willie Scott is also good. And it's 73 to 59, 31 seconds to go. Clock running, Morrow lobbed to the goal. They went for the alley-oop to Thompson and he missed it. He gets the loose ball. And a foul gonna be called on who? Did they get Blunt for it? They did. On Blunt, that is his third. Let's look at it again. Here's Morrow now. Here's the alley-oop try. Replaces Willie Scott. Eddie Matthews replaces Barney Myers as Bradley Coach Dick for Chase now. Clean house. And the only one left to come out is All-American Mitchell Anderson, who will come out, I'm sure, right after the free throw. Anthony Webster is the only man who hasn't checked in, and he'll be coming in. Mitchell on the night with 14 points. Six out of six from the line. Seven out of seven from the line. 45 points out of the senior front line of Reese, third kill, and Anderson. Not a bad, a balanced attack. Everybody on their feet here at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. Anderson, second free throw. He made a vote. And now he will come out to a standing ovation as Anthony Webster comes on. Bradley leads it by 16 points, and they're on their way to Madison Square Garden. They've hit 14 of 14 free throws. The last 14 attempts, and that, of course, has prevented Tulane from coming back. Shot no good. Bradley goes for the rebound. It's going to be out of bounds to Tulane. 19 seconds for the ball game. <laughs> Tulane will trigger it off the inbounds play. 75 to 59. Inbounds play. Clyde Eads got another one down from deep in the corner, and he gets his sixth point. 75-61, Kerry Cook to Eddie Matthews. 10 seconds to go, nine seconds and a foul gonna be called on Thompson. And Thompson has just fouled out of the ball game. And Bradley's three seniors stand up in front of their bench to their crowd for the final time. And they're on their way to Madison Square Garden. Quite a way for them to finish their homestanding career. And Eddie Matthews will go to the free throw line for Bradley. Matthews is a 63% free throw shooter at the line for a pair. And he made it. I tell you, buddy, Bradley has not been this good a free throw shooting team all year long. And when the money's on the table, Bradley has to go to work on their free throws. Matthews will get another one. He made a move. 16 of 16 down the stretch. Seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds, four seconds. Boise winners with two seconds. With one, we will not have Boise winners stepped on the end line. And it'll be out of bounds to Tulane. They will control with two seconds to go in the basketball game. And the Bradley fans standing up around the arena. And we'll just let the picture tell the story here. Morrow. It's all over. And the Bradley Blues to the NIT semifinals as they defeat Tulane 77 to 61. We'll be back with a recap of the final set right after this. The sun fades away and the shadows say slow down. Time to put aside the long day's ride and pass the good times around. Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream for a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. Use your card to your banking and
Get your financial freedom from Automatic and the first. Hi, I'm Judy Fraser, and I'm here to tell you a few things about The Outlet that perhaps you didn't know. The Outlet is a store with fashions for both men and women, fashions that are not seconds. In fact, 90% of the merchandise is first quality, with name brands and designer labels that you trust. But best of all, The Outlet sells merchandise at 20 to 50% below regular department store prices. So why pay more? Come to The Outlet, where you can afford to look great. Bradley Gray is going Georgia into the NIT semis with a 77 to 61 win tonight. For Bradley, they had six in double figures. Mitchell Anderson with 16, Donald Reese with 15, 14 for Willie Scott, 12 points out of Barney Mize, and 10 apiece out of David Thurgill and Boise winners. Leading all scores for two lanes, Paul Thompson with 19, 14 points out of Darrell Morrow as Ned Fowler's team finishes the season at 19 to 9. Bradley on to the NIT semifinals, 24 and 10. Any final comments, buddy? Dan, the main thing Bradley did down the stretch to prevent two lane from getting back in there, hit 16 out of 16. The last 16 free throws went in through the hoop, and that was the difference. They didn't allow two lane back in the game. Well, buddy, I want to thank you for helping out here this year. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I hope all of our people down in New Orleans at Channel 6, WDS, TV enjoyed it as well. Sorry we couldn't bring them better to this for all of us here in Peoria. We love it. Bradley on to New York City with a 77 to 61 win tonight as they defeat Tulane in the final game at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. For Buddy, for my man here, Carl Mathis, and for our technical crew, again the final score in the quarterfinal round of the NIT tournament. Bradley on to New York at Madison Square Garden, 77 to 61. This is Dan Twenty, so long from Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. Stay with 31 for more championship games from the NIT and NCAA. This has been a Midwest Television production. Some of the stories we're following tonight on New Center 31. The president scolds business leaders for not supporting his economic policies. And rising floodwaters contaminate some local wells. Roman? A flash flood watch for late tonight and tomorrow. Rain we don't need. And of course, it's on to New York for the Bradley Braves. That is right, Rowley. We'll go down to the field house for a live report. I'm Martin Sanders. And I'm Ann Ferry. Those details and much more next on New Center 31. The Toyota Dealer $200 million sales marathon is running strong. Toyota dealers are competing to sell 17,000 trucks this month, and they've got special incentives from Toyota to deal. They're even talking deals on Toyota four-wheel drives with high-stepping ground clearance, big 2.4-liter engine. Hey, no wonder it's a best-selling small four-by in America. They've got the trucks, and they're talking deals. When you buy, you win. Oh, 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 Truck deals! Toyota. Let's see, an Alaskan shrimp cocktail, oysters on the half shell. Ah, well, if you think the appetizers at Red Lobster look good, look what's next. Crab legs. There, as easy as that. Or maybe you're a shrimp fan. Oh, we get lots of those. And there's no sweeter way to end a lobster dinner than, oh, oh, oh very good choice. Red Lobster for the Good evening. President Reagan is criticizing big business for wavering in their support of his economic recovery program. Reagan told the National Association of Manufacturers that he was disappointed 